Good morning, Kanchana. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So uh, today is the third and the last day of Tycoon 2021. So today, all the sessions are going to be uh, virtual. So the first session, uh, for the first session, we have uh, from the healthcare, uh, healthcare segment. So this topic of the day would be uh, mRNA tech applications beyond vaccines. The session will be, uh, the speaker for the session would be Dr. Kanchana Ravichandran. And uh, the session will be moderated by Dr. M.I. Sahadullah, uh, Chairman and Managing Director, King's Healthcare Group, and a Charter Member of TAI. Over to you, Dr. Sadullah. Thank you. All right. Um, good morning. Good morning. Good morning over here, and uh, good night. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I know it's pretty late for you there. Um, uh, the <clears throat> the um, the session on uh, healthcare is um, um, really um, uh, a, we we are. Uh, uh, only half an hour we have, so I don't want to take too much of uh, your time because I'm sure you are an expert and uh, you, you will, uh, um, you know, bring in uh, various aspects of uh, mRNA technology beyond vaccines. It is um, really um, major technological innovations and research um, investment uh, is happening uh, now in this. Uh, and also we have uh, had uh, a very fast uh, um, vaccine production. And uh, so all these have uh, really, um, you know, um, are going to uh, change our, uh, our, uh, our, uh, our technology. Um, the main um, uh, messenger RNA vaccine, um, we can use it for influence, um, you know, syncytial virus, and um, and also malaria and uh, Zika virus and uh, so and so forth. And uh, even beyond that, uh, we know that autoimmune diseases, heart failure, you know, and um, also specialized. Uh, and the number of possibilities and potentials are there. And um, I'm so happy to uh, welcome Dr. Kanjana Devichandran. Uh, Associate Director Moderna, and uh, a, a, you know she is going to talk about the topic is mRNA tech application beyond vaccines. Dr. Kanjana Devindran, Associate Director Moderna, a native of uh, Chennai, and uh, Dr. Kanjana Devindran uh, obtained PhD uh, uh, in in biological chemistry from MIT and currently an associate professor uh, director uh, at Moderna at Cambridge based uh, biotechnology company dedicated to the uh, discovery and development of messenger RNA uh, uh, medicines from patients. Um, at Moderna, she leads the potential science group, a protein science group and works within uh, platform research to manage uh, protein production, uh, characterization, and uh, assay uh, development, and uh, engineering um, requiring, um, uh, and engineering required for the um, advancement of messenger RNA therapeutics. Um, also, I'd like to mention, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Kanjana is a cousin of Mugund Krishna and uh, who is the chairperson, um, cha cha chairman of uh, Shkiyati Technology and also a chartered member of Tai Ketra. So uh, over to you, um, you know, Dr. Kanjana. Remindran, it's a privilege um, for me to introduce you and uh, listen to you. Okay. Please go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Sahadullah, for that introduction. I hope everyone sees my slides and can hear me okay. I know sometimes there's a, a little buzz in the background. Um, I haven't quite solved yet. Um, thank you to the organizers as well for giving me the opportunity to speak. Today, I'll talk a little bit about the biology behind mRNA therapy. 
we'll talk about what the newer approaches are to drug discovery, how these compare to the traditional drug discovery workflows, uh, and then we'll go into Moderna's platform, what makes this unique, why we think it's a universal platform, and what's in our pipeline right now and moving forward. I actually want to start with an anal analogy that I think is quite a good one for basic biology. So what we're looking at here is a message, but it's written in a language that most of us likely don't understand. But what we do know is that it's a string of symbols and we put them together to generate a code. At the end of the day, we need a translator that can read this message and tell most of us what it means. Dr. Now you Kanta, can think about, yeah? Doc, uh, sorry to intervene, but uh, uh, your voice is not very clear. Oh, sorry, you can't. Do I have to speak louder? Can you hear me better now? It's slightly better, yes. Oh, uh, I wonder what it was. Let me see, sorry, hold on a second. Let me see if there's a way I can. How is it now? Do you hear me better? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, I'll step back a few seconds. Um, all right. So what I was trying to say is I, I would like to make an analogy to, to the basic biology that we see in cells. Uh, and this analogy relates to the, to the idea of codes and messages. So what you see here is a paragraph that is written in a language that most of us don't understand. Um, but what we know is that it's a string of symbols. These symbol, symbols form a code. Uh, and there's a translator somewhere at the end of the day that can tell us what this code means. So one can imagine that there's a diff very, very different way in which you can write the exact same message. So here's a binary code that more people are used to seeing um, consisting of zeros and ones. And this binary code at the end of the day uh, translates to say the same thing as this paragraph written in another language. We simply need a different translator to make sense of it. So at the end of the day, both of these messages are saying the exact same thing, which is a paragraph taken from A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Now, biology works very, very similarly. And in biology, we, biology nature util, utilizes its own codes um, to write messages that are then used by the cells to perform different functions. So now the code that most people are familiar seeing is DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. Everybody's heard of DNA. It is composed of four letters um, that are mixed and matched in different combinations in order to give you your genetic code. Uh, now your DNA gets amplified as the cells divide and that's a genetic message that always exists. Now every once in a while you generate a single stranded version of that message and that's what we call the messenger RNA or mRNA. Now messenger RNA contains the exact same code that DNA does and it, and it simply differs by one letter compared to DNA. Now messenger RNA is what is utilized by your body in order to create an output. And that output in our case is a protein. Um, the translation machinery in our case is known as the ribosome, and the ribosome is, a, is also a protein which is responsible for reading the messenger RNA, figuring out what that message is trying to see, and then stringing together building blocks that are called amino acids in order to generate a protein. Now, proteins are remarkably cool because they're essentially composed, they're again a code. So they consist of 20 different amino acids that are strung together in different uh, lengths and different orders uh, to create large structures. Um, so the primary sequence that we look at, again, is just amino acids that are in a row. So you can think of it as, as a string or a thread that you can then fold um, into multiple large uh, structural conformations. Uh, so think of it like origami. So you can take a primary sequence and these can fold into helices, they can fold into sheets. So that's what we call secondary structure. And these helices and sheets can keep coming together over and over again to create large macromolecular structures. And so shown here are some of those examples of large macromolecular structures. Um, so next to water, proteins are probably the most abundant molecules in your cells, uh, and they perform all sorts of functions to keep us alive. So starting from proteins that are responsible for digesting food that we eat, 
Proteins can act as hormones that carry messages through the blood. In case of plants, proteins are responsible for photosynthesis. Um, and proteins are also, they can create these large intricate network, networks um, that, are the, uh, that form the infra infrastructure of cells. So they help support the cells and they help those cells. Um, so given that proteins are present everywhere and they're in high abundance, the functioning of a protein or the malfunctioning of a protein is very often responsible for a disease state. So how does traditional drug discovery work? The drugs that you or I take every day in the form of a pill, how do these drugs operate? So these drugs are typically considered small molecules. Um, and the way they work is by binding to a protein that's already been made by your body. So every category of small molecules, so here are some commonly listed ones like aspirin for pain re relieving, um, or uh, statins to reduce cholesterol. And the way these small molecules work is that they bind to specific proteins that your body's already made, and they figure out how to turn off the function of that protein. So they control what that protein does. Um, so this is great. We've been able to do this for years and years, and we've been, we've been able to generate a repertoire of small molecule drugs, but this is a very, very long and expensive process. So on average, it takes more than 12 years to get um, one small molecule drug approved by the FDA, and we spend billions of dollars in order to make that happen. Um, and I think it might be readily obvious why that is the case, right? So we have one molecule for every protein that we want to go after, but we don't know what that molecule should be. Um, so scientists start with millions and millions of molecules, and then we slowly narrow down to one final target. So that's the funnel that you see right here. So on the very left of this chart are the number of molecules that people look at in basic research. Um, so this is all of the upfront work that goes before we even enter the clinic. So we're looking at millions of compounds preclinical. A very small fraction of these compounds actually enter clinical trials, um, and clinical trials going through phases one, two, and three can take several years. And at the end of the day, we end up with one molecule that gets approved by the FDA. So that's where modern drug discovery comes in. So the thought process now is how do we speed this process up? How do we get there faster? Uh, now, clinical trials, we know they, they will happen at a certain time frame, and that is required to generate robust medicines. But what about the upstream work? Perhaps there's something that we can do on that front that speeds up this whole process. And this requires us to have a different mentality when we think about what these drugs are. So I told you that we're looking uh, in traditional discovery at small molecules, and these small molecules interact with proteins to affect their function. But what if you can control the protein before it's made? What if you can affect how much protein you're making? You can either decrease or increase the amount of protein you're making by interfering with this message decoding pathway. And so that's where modern drug discovery really comes in. And I've, I've pointed out some examples that utilize this, this methodology. Most of you have likely heard about gene therapy as well as CRISPR, which is gene editing. Uh, both of these come in at the DNA stage. So we can either edit the DNA or deliver DNA to encode for a certain protein. Where Moderna comes in and what our specialty is, is messenger RNA therapy. So what we do is we deliver the message that encodes for a certain protein, and then your body reads that message to make the protein of interest. The other thing that I want to point out before we go into Moderna's platform in more detail is that in order to get mRNA therapy to work, you need a delivery vehicle. You cannot deliver mRNA exactly as is because it gets degraded very quickly. And so what we tend to do is coat mRNA in fat, so essentially a lot of lipids, to generate the spherical particle that then gets delivered into a person. So here's a picture of what we think that particle looks like. In orange are strands of mRNA, and in green, blue, red, and purple are different lipids or fat molecules that essentially encapsulate and protect that mRNA. I think one of the cool things about uh, lipid nanoparticles, or LNPs as we call them, um, which people don't realize, is that they're actually very similar to the fat molecules that are already present in us. Um, so most of you have taken a cholesterol test at some point. Um, so people have measured their high-density lipoprotein, or HDL, and low-density lipoprotein, or LDL. LNPs are actually very similar to these molecules. And in fact, in terms of diameter and density of these particles, they're very similar to very low density lipoproteins. 
with that, let's jump into uh, Moderna's platform and, and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I think you can see now that, uh, and maybe you see hints of this, which is that mRNA is an information molecule. mRNA can encode for whatever we want it to encode for. So there's really no limitation theoretically to the technology. Um, and that's where we came in about 10 years ago. Our goal was to deliver on the promising uh, observations with mRNA. So deliver on this promise in order to create a new generation of transformative medicines for patients. And that's our company mission. Okay, so let's go back to this um, central dogma again, going from DNA to messenger RNA to protein. I'm gonna introduce one added complexity here, which are the different categories of proteins. Um, so when these messages get read by the ribosome, they can make proteins that are either intracellular, which means they stay in the cell. You can make proteins that are membrane proteins, which means they get embedded in the cell membrane, which is there to protect the inside of the cell from the outside. You can also make proteins that get secreted. So these are proteins that function outside the cell, for example, in blood. The way mRNA technology works is that it hijacks the system. So for any protein of interest, we encode the message, we formulate it in a lipid nanoparticle, and we deliver that to a cell. Once that lipid nanoparticle gets taken up, the mRNA cargo is released. The mRNA can now interact with the body's translation machinery, the ribosome, and we, uh, as a result, generate the protein of interest, whether it be a protein that stays inside the cell, a protein that's in the membrane, or a protein that gets secreted. Okay. Um, so I'd like to first take you through our timeline for, for COVID vaccine, and then we'll talk about the timeline specifically focused on the, on the drug manufacturing component, uh, because I hope you'll be able to see how rapidly we've been able to accelerate this timeline. Um, so for uh, the COVID vaccine, the virus was actually isolated and sequenced in January of 2020. Within two days, we knew what protein sequence we wanted to make. So this is the viral protein or antigen that your body makes in order to generate a robust immune response against the virus. So within two days, we had that protein sequence. We then use our proprietary algorithm, with, which figures out what the message needs to be. So what should the messenger RNA sequence need to be in order to encode for this protein? The mRNA then got synthesized, it got formulated in our lipid nanoparticle, and then it gets filled into vials. Um, at this point, we do robust quality control testing to ensure the product is of high quality, and then it got shipped out to our collaborators at NIH for clinical trials. Um, nine months later, we were able to get emergency use approval for our, for our COVID vaccine, also known as spike vax. So this whole process took about 11 months, but I think what is really striking and fascinating is how quickly we were able to go from isolating the virus to making a drug. Um, and that took only about 42 days. Okay, so how did we get there? Um, the reason we were able to get there that quickly is because we've been heavily invested in basic research over the past 10 years. Uh, there are really three pillars to our platform. The first is our messenger RNA sequence. So I told you that there's one message and that message encodes for one protein. In reality, it's a little bit more complicated. You can have multiple different messages that encode for the same protein. And part of our job is figuring out what that ideal message is. Some of these messages work better than others for, for making the protein in the cell. So that's one component of our platform. The second component is going back to those lipids. Um, again, there are different, very, a lot of different lipids that we can utilize in different ratios. So part of our, our effort is trying to figure out what lipids should be utilized when, because these lipids end up being crucial in directing how, when, and where the protein gets made. The last pillar of our platform are our manufacturing processes. We invest very, very heavily to identify the most robust mRNA and LNP synthesis platforms. So we want um, processes that are high yielding, that generate material of high purity, and that have a low turnaround time and low cost. These three pillars, mRNA design, delivery, and process come together to form what is known as our platform. And our platform can then be utilized to apply to various uh, different modalities. So what do we mean by a modality? Um, so one of the things that we're trying to do is identify novel ways in which to deliver mRNA um, to different cell types. 
And so trying to get it to different cell types, each of these is considered an application or a modality. Uh, and so the idea being that within each modality, we will have multiple different drugs, and then we also have multiple different modalities. So our technology gets time and again tested through multiple different applications in order to minimize the technology risk. Our modalities are also what link our platform to the therapeutic areas. Um, so modalities are where, are where can we get our mRNA, and then our therapeutic areas are what diseases are we trying to treat. So at present, Moderna has five different therapeutic areas that we focus on, infectious disease, oncology, cardiovascular, bear, and autoimmune. Okay, um, so people so far have only thought of us as a COVID-19 uh, vaccine company uh, because that's our only commercial product. But COVID-19 is actually one target that is within one modality in our platform. Um, so we have at present, four, five, six, six, sorry, eight different modalities that are either in research, preclinical or clinical stages. And the COVID-19 uh, vaccine is one target within one of these modalities. Um, so we cover a range of different uh, areas that we're trying to get into. Again, we have proteins that are secreted and uh, found throughout the body. We work on personalized cancer vaccines. Um, we're in very interested in tumors and immuno-oncology, um, as well as we do uh, intracellular therapies for proteins that function inside the cell. On the research end, um, we have some newer things that we're trying to explore. We very much are trying to get into lungs um, as well as stem cells. Okay, I hope I've been able to show you that mRNA is really an information molecule um, and that it can encode for whatever we want it to encode for. As I said, we are constantly looking at new ways to deliver mRNA to different cell types, each of which is a new application that we call a modality. Um, so our ultimate vision for what we think mRNA therapy should look like is that we have a range of different modalities. So shown here, we're looking at eight different modalities. And within each modality, we have a range of different medicines that target different disease areas. So at the end of the day, we have a whole array. We have a whole spectrum of new transformative medicines uh, that can meet previously unmed disease area needs. Okay, uh, this is a quick snapshot of what our current pipeline looks like. Um, I mentioned that COVID vaccine is, uh, is one of the few things that we work on. It's actually one out of six and one out of 34 of our developmental candidates. So one out of six vaccines and one out of 34 developmental candidates. Um, so during the time of COVID, uh, we've obviously been working on our vaccine, but we've made significant progress in, in all of our pipeline. Um, so our CMV vaccine, another one that has now gotten to phase three clinical trials. Um, and as Dr. Saadullah mentioned, we've gotten into the flu space. So we not only made it through preclinical, but are in a combo phase one, two trial for flu as well. Um, something I'm really excited about and quite passionate about are these systemic intracellular therapies. Uh, we have two that were dosed in patients in phase one earlier this year. Um, and the reason that uh, I'm quite passionate about these are these are rare metabolic disorders that affect kids. Um, and, and so they're often hard to diagnose, they're hard to come up with therapies for, uh, and it's also hard to enroll patients in clinical trials. Um, so I'm very excited about uh, the progress that we're making on that front. Uh, the one thing that I want to highlight is our CMV vaccine. Uh, and the reason I want to highlight that is that it, because it really shows the versatility of mRNA therapy. Uh, now, traditional drugs, they're one thing, right? One drug molecule. The cool thing about mRNA technology is that we can deliver multiple messenger RNAs, so multiple information molecules in the same delivery vehicle. So in the case of CMV, it's well known in the literature that you need to make six different proteins um, in order for this to be a good antigen to produce uh, an immune response. So what we do is we make mRNA that encodes for each of these six proteins, formulate that in the same lipid nanoparticle, this gets delivered to cells, engages with the ribosome, um, and then you get production of all six proteins that come together in their native format. So I think this, this highlights really highlights the power of our technology. Okay, I want to reiterate again how quickly we can do this process. Um, I told you that in the small molecule space, we start with millions and millions of drugs. Um, so really to get from millions to on the order, you know, a handful that you would want to test in clinical trials can take years and years. 
In our case, we start with an idea. Um, we determine what our protein sequence will be. So we start with one molecule as opposed to millions. We figure out what the message needs to be to encode for that protein sequence. This then enters our manufacturing pipeline. So there are multiple steps in this process to generate pure mRNA, which then gets formulated, gets into vials. We do all of the quality control to ensure the property, uh, the, the product is great, um, and that gets injected into people. Um, so we think we can go all the way from idea to having a great product in under two months. Where are we going next? Um, so what we've shown over the past two years with the COVID vaccine is that the mRNA platform works and it works really, really well. Um, we're in a situation now we, where we have, we finally have a revenue source. This is our first commercial product. Um, and our goal now is to just keep building on this pipeline. Um, so we, we built this company based on a premise that if one of these mRNA drugs would work, then many, many would. Um, due to the fact that it's all a single platform. Um, so now we're, we're incredibly excited about the future and we're excited about all of the different uh, things we have in our current pipeline. Um, so our goal really is to get, is to get bigger and bolder. Um, so we're doing a lot towards that. One, we're hiring a lot. I, I think a lot of people don't know how small Moderna is. At present, we have about 2,400 employees. Before the pandemic, we were less than half that. So we had on the order about 1,000 people, um, which is a lot less compared to traditional pharma. Um, so we're actively recruiting. We are very, very heavily into digitalization, robotics, and artificial intelligence um, in order to streamline all of our workflows. Um, we will, we have been, and we will continue to work on the process side. Um, we've gotten here only because of how good our manufacturing processes are, and we will actively continue to develop those. Um, and we are actively looking at building manufacturing, more manufacturing sites. So we're expanding in our current um, Massachusetts came, um, manufacturing site, but we're also in discussions with countries around the world in order to build more manufacturing sites. Um, with that, I want to leave you with a snapshot of where things stand. Again, everybody knows us for our commercial COVID vaccine, but I've shown you today that we have um, candidates that are in multiple phases, one, two, and three of clinical trials. Not only do these target vaccines, but we're looking in the immuno-oncology space, the rare disease space, cardiovascular, as well as autoimmune. Um, I told you that we're, we're a pretty small company, but we are trying to get bigger. When I started, actually, five years ago, I think we were about 500 people. Um, something that I'm really excited about and, and thrilled with is that uh, we are known for being a very good employer. So this is the seventh year in a row that we've been uh, named by Science Magazine as a top employer. Um, so I'm incredibly proud to, to work for this organization. Um, with that, here's a, a picture of us. This is a very old one. Um, I, I think I had just started at Moderna. Here I am in the front. Um, so it's at, the, at present, we can't seem to capture the whole company in the same, same snapshot. Uh, but that's all I have for you today. Uh, thank you for your attention, and, and I'm happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you, Dr. Kanjana. You know, it was, uh, it was uh, uh, probably um, many people might not have understood, <laughs> you know, some of the uh, details about it. But uh, certainly beyond um, messenger protein, uh, we are going to have a lot of development. And um, I would uh, like to, um, uh, you know, invite any questions uh, if people have, and we can ask the questions. Anyone? I think uh, we have got a couple of minutes already. Um, I, I, I just wanted to ask you about um, this uh, personalized cancer vaccines also coming up uh, with the messenger um, RNA, right? And uh, so what is the development there uh, is coming up now? Uh, are you working on it or, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, I believe we're in phase phase two over there. Um, yeah. So we're making good progress. Um, it, you know, I, I think unfortunately some things have, with the, the COVID, uh, pandemic, we have moved a little slower on things than, than we would have liked to, but we're very passionate about it and we're really pushing hard. So I am optimistic that within the next few years, we'll uh, make enough progress to hit the next phase. Um, but I think that's also, uh, it, at least in my opinion, I think personalization is where things are at, right? Uh, and I think more and more drugs are going to get more personalized as we move forward.
the the vaccine you know you you mentioned that uh, to 20 years is to be the pattern and uh, now two billion dollars and now it has uh, really uh, the technology has taken it uh, uh, forward and uh, this is an amazing uh, development and uh, so um, uh, I think as we go along you know do you think uh, still there will be better and better developments so that uh, it can be faster absolutely I think so um, I know that a lot of people like a lot of people are worried because they feel like the process of coming up with this vaccine was rushed. Um, I, I don't think it was. I don't think there was any sacrifice on science. And I think it goes to show that we can do it. We can do things much faster. Um, that just hasn't been the, the process before. So I, yeah, I, I think that's where we're heading. I, I, and I think we've solved the upstream portion, right? We know how to make things faster. Now it's a question of how do we accelerate the whole process without sacrificing the quality of the science. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> uh, Dr. Kanjana. It was a very, very, very um, enlightening talk. And um, I think this is an area we all um, are going to get familiar with and uh, familiarize with because uh, um, I, I, I think uh, the um, um, I am sure that uh, you are working uh, with the Moderna uh, quite a bit over there, and uh, I think um, there will be more and more developments will be coming, and um, so we will keep in touch with you at least to have uh, in future also some interactions so that we learn better and better from you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation right. to speak today. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.